Okay, I'm back lane and you're gonna hear squishy noises as I walk around. I've got aerosol paint all on the bottom of most of my socks. And although they've been washed over and over and over again, we're still getting this frog-like substance to stick to the floor um, from the bottom of my socks. It's kind of funny, I would show you, but I'm not that limber anymore. Um, behind me, oh, and I'm back laying this Catalyst and Company, Catalyst and Company, where we're catalysts in each other's lives, as well as our own, and we work at being the artists we've always wanted to be. Uh, behind me is something I just started laying out a few minutes ago. It's going to be a sketch of a painting I did of Frida Kahlo. I'm going to sit down. Uh, of Frida Kahlo, because I've been doing these mural sketches. Not that I'm getting paid for it. <laughs> which is a bit of a problem, but, uh, you know, I'm working towards getting these mural, mural ideas and the concepts in place. So when finally someone says, yes, 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 let's see, you know, let's start a conversation or let's talk about it. Here's a deposit and let's start, you know, working towards uh, an image that we all agree on. I have all the pieces in place. So basically I've been building uh, constructing puzzle pieces, getting ready for them to fit together in, in, um, in, in using, sorry, uh, getting them, getting ready to fit them together using a Procreate or um, whatever, uh, Photoshop. Although I can't do it, I have to find, and I don't really want to learn. I got to find somebody who can do it for me. It'll be much faster than me spending months, you know, trying to figure this out and obsessing over that now. So I'm putting these images together uh, so that we can fit them together again, like little little puzzle pieces and make them adapt, those puzzle pieces adapt to the different buildings or businesses that I want to approach. I've already talked to two different hotels, very big hotels here in town. We originally, we got, oh my God, this is awesome. And then, uh, then nothing. Uh, one, I was supposed to meet with the general manager, the district general manager or something or other. The hotel was sold. Uh, and so that, that went off the table uh, with the ownership changing. And so I'm reapproaching them. And then the other one, I don't even know what happened there, but we're going to try again. And I, I have been really, really frustrated with like Frida Kahlo and the highwaymen uh, mural concepts or ideas because I did them, submitted them, let's start the conversation was basically what I wrote in the proposal in a more eloquent way. And uh, the we've been waiting for approval from this one company who owns a building that wanted a mural and the city wanted done. We're waiting approval from somewhere in corporate, la la land, I don't even know. And uh, we I did make it perfectly clear. Let's work together on, on developing something that, you know, we can all appreciate and we're all comfortable with. And then I've been frustrated, but at the same time, I've been able to think and rethink and try different colors and build different puzzle pieces to fit together. So she is, she came about last night because I was going through files, my files of Frida Kahlo's and the different ones that we've sold and a woman who bought one of my paintings and has taken it to Mexico, to her new home in Mexico, happened to send me a picture yesterday of it hanging up in her home. And I went, oh, oh, that's the puzzle piece that's been missing. I've been doing all these sketches with Frida, like, like you know, sitting up and looking straight at the camera and what I usually do, a fairly confrontational, gaze at the viewer, although one where she's like looking off into the ethereal and dreaming about cookies or something or other, tequila, her future, who knows what she was thinking about, but she's glamorously looking off. So I've been trying to make those fit onto the buildings and have them make sense in a way where at the location, they're engaging and they're engaging not just people who are driving by in cars and have a slightly higher 
uh, field of view, but also people that are on the ground and walking. Because in the end, we are going to need people, we're going to want people or encourage people to do selfies, to stand in front of these images and take pictures of themselves, especially young women when it comes to Frida Kahlo, because that is completely a female-based project where I want to pull in female artists from around the city. And I was so excited about this four or five months ago when we originally approached the city about it. And my, my enthusiasm waned a little bit, but my stubborn, stubbornness has not. I'm fairly pig-headed and thick-skulled and stubborn. And when I want a project done, when I feel so much passion about a project, it means it has come to mind and will not leave me, will not leave my core, my heart, my soul for, for a, a well, sorry, for a specific reason. And it's one that I don't even understand at the time. I just want to make sure of something. Yeah. Okay. Looking, at the, looking in the right direction on the iPad. It's always a thing. Um, so I have this drive to get this done, get this up. And while we haven't gotten people to go, yes, we're behind it and sign off and, and agree to working, working with, uh, with me, with us, with the city, uh, for whatever reason, it has been an auspicious time. We're a bit able to take my ideas and expand on them, take the colors and expand on them or water them down. I've had, I've gotten criticism from mural artists that I put too much detail into stuff. I don't do this. I don't do that. I don't really care. I'm not even listening because I don't want to do, and hopefully like you, I don't want to do what everybody else is doing. I don't want to follow everybody else's ideas. I don't want to duplicate. I don't want to Xerox. I want to do I want to do and I want to help other people to do something that's a little bit new, a little bit different and slightly more free form. And in all my details that I have heard about uh, what people don't understand is that helps the flow. That, that helps the entire flow. And it's also, I'm so practiced at, at this point at doing detail, these weird, not doing detail like every little hair on her face because I don't care. Uh, about that, because again, it's a trope, the details in the background, the flourishes, I can teach them easily. Teach other people how to do them like this. They're easily explainable. They're a shorthand. But they're also a shorthand oops, to... <laughs> Sorry, I have a notebook on my lap that's sliding off. They're also a shorthand to help the figure come into fruition. It helps me to see the balance better, to see the proportions better. Not that they come out perfect every time, but it also helps me to pull it in focus. Those details are real quick and easy for me to do. And so people, other mural artists who aren't used to doing detail or haven't, um, haven't been with me in the studio for me to say, look at this is how we can do this. It's going to do this. It's going to do that, and it's going to be a means to an end, and and a means uh, a means to an end, and also it's going to appeal to people who are taking selfies. It's going to give them something else to focus on, and in those flourishes and things as well as balancing out the figure and and offering selfie uh, opportunities. It's um, doing what I like to do, which is these little details and things, talking about painting without talking about painting. So they have an educational value. These little details, like I said, are very quick to learn. I, I, I can teach them easily and people should be able to learn, pick, them, pick the uh, techniques up pretty easily. So it's an educational value as well. There's a lot that goes into to what I do. So I'm not I'm not um, really a blind, I'm not willing to go along with what everybody else is doing. I love Shepherd Fairy. I don't want to copy Shepherd Fairy. 
I love but people are people are doing it and it irritates me I don't want to copy um, other mural artists ones from the 80s and 90s it's already been done why would I want to do it again why would I encourage anyone to copy is a big thing too so I am continuing to be stubborn and pig-headed and thick as an acorn and just drive ahead with the ideas I have, with the mural ideas I have, with the concepts I have, and also with the techniques I have while I'm helping them evolve. Look at me, I'm so lofty. So tonight it's Thursday, today is Thursday, March 7th. And tonight, dear listeners, I am being awarded my first fellowship. I've complained endlessly about this city that I live in because it calls itself an art city, like a lot of places do. We love artists, but they don't support artists, as we're seeing with the mural projects. Uh, by the way, the city is having trouble even getting one, <laughs> one wall <laughs> in this city that loves art and these buildings, you know, these uh, building owners come in and construction companies and stuff. And they're like, we love this place. It's for the arts. And we can't get one wall. We can't get a single wall. So yeah, I've been frustrated with that. I've been frustrated with the limitations um, that are here for artists and that we have to go outside the city to find true validation. We can't have, oh, okay, I'm gonna get to it in a minute. Um, I actually stood with the president of the local museum and said, why is it you don't have an artist residency here? Why? You want to consider yourself a world-class art museum but you don't have artist residencies. You have nothing to support any real art in the city and in the surrounding areas. And it's not something anybody can argue with. They can't go, oh yeah, but, although I did hear, well, we have a, a sh an exhibit up right now of a local artist, but she got it because her best friend was sitting on the board and suggested we do it. And her best friend was a philanthropist, so there. It's stuff like that that I, I butt heads with, and I'm, I'm pretty vocal about it because what are they gonna keep saying? No? Are they gonna say no harder? Like, how is that gonna affect me? What's gonna affect me and affect change here where you are uh, at museums and room is getting people to change, getting, getting the status quo to go, oh, wait a minute, maybe we're being myopic and we're limiting ourselves and we're limiting what the public can see and we're limit limiting opportunities to all the artists around us. That's the end goal. That and me being able to do stuff with museums. So tonight I'm getting a fellowship and I have been getting guidance from two people who are on the board of this fellowship. And this is my very first fellowship. And I'm deeply shocked. But I did get it here in the city uh, from an organization here in the city who actually does uh, support artists. Uh, so I've gone to board members and this is what I tend to do, although I'm not the best at taking criticism. Um, and advice because most of the time I don't care. Uh, people are coming at it from their the, the knowledge that they have or the limited knowledge that they may have and the limited experience that they may have. And they're saying, well, you can't, you can't, you can't. Well, I'm asking, how can we? So I've gone to a couple board members who have been giving me guidance and advice and a little mentorship. And one of them actually said to me, look at I can help you but you've got to, here in the city, but you've got to get um, an artist residency in place. And I went, okay, because like many, many, many artists, I've gone online and looked up hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of artist residencies. And the bulk of them have nothing to do with advancing the artist, really. 
the bulk of them, and this is what you may want to look into, is we will charge you nominal rent at like $1,000 a month or $1,500 a month on, on our goat farm. And you're going to be responsible for keep taking care of the house and the goats while you're here. That's, that's not an artist residency. That's not a serious one. Um, I've, I've read so many where I just go, ugh. Uh, there's also some that try to be valid, but it's you will contain your interests to this tiny little thing. I just looked at one um, in Atlanta. I looked at another one in Rhode Island where I was hoping to go back to for at least one artist residency uh, where uh, in several other states. These are just indicative of what's out there. Uh, this one in, in Georgia and some Atlanta, Georgia, was um, it was a city fellowship, but you had city fellowship op open to the a city fellowship, open to the public, open to everybody, but you have to paint, you have to keep your ideas and materials condensed down to this particular focus and plants and stuff. Uh, there's a ra railway that runs through the city, and so you have to keep it all informative and educational about this rail trail that they've turned into like a bike rail trail kind of a thing. And you have to keep it to that and plants and stuff. Uh, I was looking at one on Prudence Island in Rhode Island. Open to everybody. It's on Prudence Island. Come experience Rhode Island, but it's going to cost you this much. And you have to stick to nature and that. It just gets tinier and tinier. The focus becomes too tiny. Whereas I'm looking, at thing, looking for things that are applicable. That includes social justice and figure work and history and uh, possibly history of the the uh, community around them, but in particular history of people who have been marginalized. This, there's a number of things I'm looking for, but the opportunities for what I'm looking for or what I'm interested in get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, um, you know, where I can take it. So I am actually like a lot of, you know, like a lot of people, we are looking for relationships with, with museums. We're looking for relationships with people who can advance our careers. Um, so I have, okay, that's blank, but I have spent endless hours, endless hours just like listing opportunities and then writing up a code system so I know which ones are valuable, which ones are just like goat farm. Um, come experience nature crap. And so I've written up a code system so I can go, nope, 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 nope. Okay, that was open, it closed February 1st. It closed yesterday, you can't fill out the form anymore. But even with it, where there's a sliver of hope with this fellowship, I'm gonna take the money and put together presentation packages and approach the chief curator or curator staff and say, this is what I would like to do with you. Send, you know, I'm gonna mail it, physically mail it. Um, Cause emailing, you get lost in the email. So I'm gonna physically mail and email people and say, this is what I would like to do with your particular establishment, with your venue, with your uh, museum. Cause I need an artist residency, but I need an artist residency that has impact and is not just frivolous. I don't wanna go play with glitter on a goat farm. But as my, my guidance counselor, the, the, the woman that, that was giving me guidance on this said, if you can get an artist re residency, I can do this for you. And it's taking the steps to get me into uh, museums, which another one of her friends and someone who was very big with this particular organization was able to do. So I'm listening, I'm frustrated, I'm really frustrated. I'm really frustrated because out of probably three days worth of 
um, researching, uh, three days solid of researching, I maybe have eight that are almost valuable. I have two or three that look that would be appropriate and I go, okay, that that's a good fit. But I'm looking at Brown University where there's nothing available. At Brown University, at RISD, where at Island School of Design, there is nothing. There is nothing. Um, at the at some of the you know, some of these top level schools or institutions, there's where they're touting art and visual art. There's nothing for us. And it's mind boggling. It's mind boggling. However, I did find something at the, let me find it, Sh University? Yeah, University of Chicago. That's my A number one. When Once I get the uh, fellowship and I have the money, I can put together a full presentation. I'm also thinking about how do I want to approach them? Which particular project do I want to approach them with? Uh, I had been thinking about the Worcester Art Museum because I've been working from the William Bullard portfolio and, and they have the bulk of his uh, photographs at the Worcester Art Museum. So for months I've been like, how can I make this happen? How do I do this? Who do I approach? And But with this fellowship comes um, a sense of strength. And uh, yeah, I can do this. I can get this done. I can do this. I can do it on my own. Yeah, this fellowship has been a big deal. It's been a big win, not just for me, but for uh, everybody who's been supporting me because now we can move forward and we can talk about the steps that we need to take or can take to further our, our careers or our artwork instead of just being on this endless loop of, yep, didn't happen again. Yep, I was asked to do this major project or two major projects or five major projects. Like the solo exhibit in, in Rhode Island, I was asked to do. I was asked to do and I did work for. And that, who, who knows, who knows? The organizers never organized. You know, stuff like that or the other mural project here in town where I was like, we want you, we love your artwork. We've got four or five projects for you. We want you to do this thing. Super enthusiastic, we love you. Oh, oh, we don't wanna pay anybody. So we're going with a guy who doesn't paint figures and faces and um, we're gonna do it for nothing to cheap, 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 cheap. You know, instead of being on that endless loop of for the 50th time this year, I'm doing the thing and you're doing the thing and we're all behind it and we're all excited. Oh. Instead of that endless loop, now with the fellowship, we can start talking about the steps we need to take to move further ahead. Hopefully. Um, that is the goal. And as you kind of saw, I've been doing a lot of um, research and prep for tonight, for after tonight, after tonight. So I can hit the ground running. I can go to the bank tomorrow morning and we hit the ground running. Finally, finally. But for today, I'm laying out Frida Kahlo and I'm gonna take my sticky socks over here for a sec. And as you can see, there's like loopy loops. This is big, this is, the, the wool is nine foot by nine foot. I'm not making her quite nine foot by nine foot. Who knows why? I don't know what I do. But when I was laying her out this morning, after I had gessoed the surface yesterday, I started laying her out this morning. And it's obviously not tiny little details yet. What I've got is just swoops of color. So we have a flow going. In all the mural designs, I'm starting out with a figure eight, or a, an infinity figure. So there is a constant flow in the ideas and imagery. Then I'm breaking it down and I'm putting in infinity loops. And I'm putting in swirlies, but infinity loops. So there's this constant reminder to me as, as a painter, as an artist, as a designer, I guess, that there has to be flow. It can't be just a static figure. 
that we will take as a puzzle piece and cram into something else. It is to allow for elasticity in ideas, elasticity in design, and elasticity in the viewer's mind, eventually, hopefully. That's what I'm thinking about. I'm going to get back to work on that with my sticky socks. First, I'm going to eat something, and uh, then I'm going to try and wash up and get ready for tonight. And I'm super glad we get to share this. I'm super glad. That's it. I'm Beck Lane, this catalysting company. And even, oh, by the way, and I love this. Just as an aside, I've started signing all my personal emails to people I know, um, you know, state out what I have to say. I love doing this. I sign it instead of sincerely or all the best, like I usually do, respectfully, blah, blah, blah. I've been writing, as seen on TV, comma, award-winning famous artist Beck Lane. It delights me to no end. How... I've blown, blown the circumstances up into something grand. I'm like Walter Mitty on steroids, but it cracks me up and it's fun. So I'm back. I am. Oh, okay. Ready? So as seen on TV on Nightline ABC, sort of my artwork anyway, or a mural, chalkboard mural I did as seen on TV, comma, Award-winning, famous artist, Beck Lane on Catalyst and Company. If you'd like to help support Catalyst and Company, because yes, I do have some money coming in, but I'm now four months behind on my rent, and that's not going to quite do it. And I always need paint and crap. But if you'd like to help support Catalyst and Company, all the links are down below. If, however, which is what we want, if you would like to buy, uh, if you would like to look into purchasing original work, uh, the galleries are down below, but you can also message me. You can uh, write a comment and we can start the conversation. We can start the conversation. All right, Carrie, ready? We're getting there, Carrie. We're getting there, buddy. And Eric and Val and everybody else who has been kind enough to help support me over the years. We'll see what happens next. Cheer! Meow, meow, meow. Boink!